Welcome back, everybody. This is Sujan Patel. I've got Christine Bolden here, and I'm really excited to talk to you today because it is something um, I hate doing. It's it's for it's the topics on prospecting for people who hate small talk, uh, and there's introverts uh, parts in there. So, Christine, uh, would you mind just quickly introducing yourself? Sure. My name is Christine, and I'm the founder of Soulful Selling, and I work with people who hate small talk, but I also work with introverts. <laughs> and a lot of people don't realize that they're introverts, but one of the signs, like if you hate small talk, you may be an introvert. And we're going to talk a little bit about that, I think, today. Awesome. And we were talking beforehand that I was like, where did this whole, where did the introvert part come in from, right? Mm -hmm. And you, were, you said something that you've been doing sales for 15 years and only in the last five years have you figured out, oh, I'm introverted. And, and did, is that what yeah. I, mean, what I did? Yeah. I mean, really my whole life, I was trying to change something that was very innate in me. I mean, I grew up and I was a super shy kid. I was like so scared to raise my hand in class, but, um, but I love to sell. Like I'm a born salesperson. I love connecting with people. And it's so funny. I realized, I think one of the reasons that I enjoyed selling so much was because that was my opportunity con to connect with people like without small talk. <laughs> Ah, you, is it because you just jump into things or how does, what, yeah, I mean, I had, I knew, cause I think some of my hesitation with small talk is sometimes I find it's very like not productive, but sometimes I also just don't know what to say to someone who's a stranger. Um, and it makes me feel like awkward or uncomfortable. So like in the sales process, I'm like, I have a very clear goal. I know exactly what I'm going to say. And that makes it so much easier for me. Um, but once I realized that I was an introvert, I realized that I was not the only person in the world who hates small talk, um, which was a revelation to me. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, I, I, uh, I enjoy someone leading the small talk. I cannot start it. I'm just like, mm -hmm. let's just get to the point. Like, we're here. Right. We're both, like, you know, we started this the, before we started recording. It's like, hey, we're here for a purpose. I'd love to learn more about you and connect through mm -hmm. the purpose. Uh, and I'm sure we could do a lot from that or, or afterwards. Uh, I just want to jump into it. Uh, and some people I've done that with other folks and they're like, Hey, well, let, let's, let's back up a second. And I'm like, there's no backing up. This is all <laughs> I got to give. Um, but anyways, so um, one of the things, um, you know, I can, you say a lot in, in your, in your site and in, in places um, you're, you're, you're active on is that there is actually an advantage to, to having, you know, being, someone who hates small talk or being an introvert, like what is that advantage or how, I guess? Yeah, I, such a good question. And I will say, even if you don't identify as an introvert, and a lot of people don't, if you just feel like you have a different style and you don't um, like small talk, that's fine. Um, but what I find is people who hate small talk are often introverts or they might, you know, introversion and extroversion is on a scale, right? So you might not be an extreme introvert. You might be somewhere kind of in the middle. And that's kind of where I am, honestly. Um, and, but there are so many benefits to that because typically an introvert is very empathic, right? Which means we kind of take on like the feelings of other people and we are great noticers. So there are, you know, a lot of strengths in being, working in sales and having those skills. So number one, being a great listener, um, you know, anyone who has worked at any level of sales knows it's more important to listen than to talk. Um, so listening is a big one. Picking up on nonverbal cues, you know, if you're a great observer and a great like a feeler of the environment, you're going to be able to pick up more on the nonverbal cues. You're going to be able to be that person who kind of like reads the vibe of the room. Again, so important. Some people would say that's like using your intuition. Um, but I just think that that's like a superpower of someone who is a little bit more quiet and more of a, a like a noticer and a listener more than a talker. So I think those are just a couple of them. Um, but I think in any sales situation, those are things that are so important. Absolutely. And, and sales is all about listening, right? It's not mm -hmm. like, it's about hearing what the problem is and, and, and then saying the right things on the other, at the other end. Right. Um, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. I always, and even, and even being felt like the, you were heard, right? Because sometimes when you're dealing with someone who's an extrovert and, and just want to clarify, like not good or bad, right? They're just different types of people. But sometimes people, you know, we've all been with people who just like to hear themselves talk. And sometimes, you know, especially if you're talking to someone who you're trying to sell to, they want to feel like you've heard them. 
Um, and that's really important. And I think that's a big thing that if you're a more quiet person, um, that's, a, that's a huge strength that people are going to feel like, okay, I was heard. They understand me. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Uh, now, we talked about small talk and introverts. I want to actually define, like, what does, like, sm what is small talk? What does it look like? What does it feel like? And, like, I mean, I guess, like, why is, why is it unnatural, like, for, for an introvert or, or folks who don't like it? Yeah, so small talk is everything from like, um, you know, I, I'm just like envisioning being at a conference and waiting in like the food line, right? And it's the guy like, hey, where are you from? Or like, can you believe this weather? It's really hot in here. You know, like it's all that little chit chat that I feel like some people feel like that's necessary because maybe they're just not comfortable with silence. Um, you know, a lot of people are very like, I'm so happy being in that line, like, because I don't have to talk. <laughs> And I don't have to interact because I've just been at this conference and there's like so much networking going on. So I'm like, this is my quiet time. Don't talk to me. <laughs> but some people I feel like um, they're either trying to be polite or they're trying to, you know, fill in that silence. So it's all those kinds of conversations. And, and a lot of times it does happen when you first get to know someone in a meeting, whether in person or, or like this, like we're on this Zoom um, call where people, you know, feel like, well, like. I want to, I want to do a little chit chat first. Maybe it's their way of getting comfortable. And, and I think everyone does it for different reasons. Um, yeah. And I think everyone, like different people just like it for different reasons. Like I, I sometimes I'm like, well, this is not an efficient use of my time or I want quiet time now. Or <laughs> like, I just like, I don't think this is necessary. Like I don't need to talk to the person waiting in line. Like, I, like I'm not interested in that. <laughs> so like, it can be a lot of different things. So I get that. It totally makes sense when you're at a conference or in person. Um, but what about like over the phone? I know like, you know, zoom, but what about over the phone? Like there's no voice, there's no part. How, how do you build that relationship without the small talk or. Right. So that's actually a great question because it is kind of an icebreaker. Right. And there is that like getting to know people. So it's interesting because I've had that where I've had to cold call people before, um, you know, in my early sales career. And so for me, I would always take a different approach on it and I would kind of like immediately go deeper. So for some people, it's like, oh, how's the weather in San Francisco today? Or what's going on in New York today? And I just find that's like such a useless question. <laughs> so I would always do a little research on the people that I talk to. And instead of, I mean, because there, there is the idea of kind of warming up the conversation. So I would always make it a little bit more personal um, and say like, oh, you know, I know so-and-so at your company. Or if I know that, um, well, it's very funny. I happen to be from New Jersey and there's like, an extraordinarily high number of people that are also from New Jersey. <laughs> so sometimes I'll see someone like, oh, I saw you're, you're from New Jersey, like what part are you from? And, and like, we'll have kind of a little bit of small talk conversation about that, but I try to make it more relevant um, to something like personal to me or that's interesting to me. So it feels less awkward um, because just having a conversation about the weather just seems a little um, pointless. And I feel like a lot of times that's like people's go-to. So I've always feel like in being an introvert or, or not one who doesn't like small talk is a disadvantage. But I mean, you've already, you mentioned so many good things about it. I've always been like, oh man, how am I going to like, I get so anxious. Like, how am I going to like start this conversation? Like, it's going to be really awkward. And I hope we meet in a seated, like if I'm doing an in-person coffee meeting, I hope we meet like when we both sit down or like before we order coffee. So it's not awkward, right? Because I just don't want that like, Mm -hmm. What kind of coffee do you like? You know, it's, I don't care. Right. <laughs> uh, I'm sure the person is not going to remember that part. So, but it's an advantage. Um, um, and and not yeah. Not only is it an advantage, I would argue that introverts are the best salespeople. Um, by far, in everything I've seen, and that's really in my experience, even working in all types of sales environments, I've seen um, some some of the best leaders were. Um, I wouldn't say the most highly introverted, but were like, had all of the signs that um, an introvert had being a great listener, being um, able to create deep relationships with the decision makers, um, being very intuitive and like being able to understand and like hear like not just what they were saying, but like the meaning understand underneath what they were saying. And I think that really is what makes um, someone who's on the introverted side a better, like a better or the best salesperson. Yep. That totally makes sense. Yeah. I think it's, it's really like you're, I think you've said this in, in some of your blog posts or whatnot. It's like a superpower, right? Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. It, it's because I've, I've never met a salesperson who's great at listening, 
but <laughs> if you were if you did technically talk less it'll either be awkwardly silent or the other person would be talking more either mm-hmm. probably the awkwardly silent part is not good but um you know <laughs> the other part is uh, so that's awesome and, and i like the fact that you know that example you're given um you how you do your homework and you do your research so it might not be considered small talk it's not small talk but it's a good way to start the conversation with something actually meaningful where it's pointed at a in a direction like you 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 if you did the research you can truly connect with someone not on like oh man it's hot outside yes it is hot summer is hot but it is a fact uh but you're talking about like oh you're from new jersey i'm from new jersey um what part did you grow up i grew up and if you grew up down the street that's like a true connection if Mm -hmm. that actually ends up being the case um so i really love that like you actually doing the research you get more pointed small talk or like actual conversation yeah and i feel like if i'm directing it it makes it a little bit easier too because um you know it's something that's personal to me and like getting to to know that person. So me leading it rather than someone kind of throwing out a really vague comment to me um, is a little bit more, um, I don't know, it, it feels differently for me. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think it's, a, it probably feels different because you're actually connecting with someone and you can, yeah. you can control what that connection is versus like you osmosis, like by chance, something interesting comes up and then you connect, right? Um, right, right. So I want to dive into like, uh, and this is kind of the last part of what I want to talk about with you is, is really the specifics of like how to actually jump in. Like, okay, you have identified yourself as, as this type of person. Um, you now are accepted that it's a superpower and you're going to, you're like motivated. Uh, how, how, how do you go about doing this? Yeah. So that's a great question. So I always give the example of like when I used to work in advertising sales, I worked for a lot of big digital media companies and like a very common thing was to take out a big group of people and we either do, they would call it a lunch and learn or bring an entire team of like 10 people out um, for a dinner or to a concert. Right. And then, um, right. And that's like my worst nightmare because I'm like, oh my God, I've got to manage all of these 10 people and talk to them all and like, make sure they're happy. And like, that sounds first of all, super exhausting and also really not fun for me. Um, so I would just say, you know, and, and there were like requirements in, in my company, like, oh, you have to do this many lunch and learns per week with this many clients. And I'm like, Ooh, this is not fun. So I would say, well, how about I am going to go, like there's two major decision makers. I'm going to bring them the lunch instead. And if I don't, you know, if that's not successful, then I'll I'll do it the other way. So I kind of like had to make a deal with my boss. Like, let me just try it this way and see. And of course that was so much more effective because meeting just two people or even one person for a lunch and I would make it sure that it was something where we could actually like really have a deep conversation. It wouldn't be like, bring them out for like a spa day because then I wouldn't be able to really talk to them. So Mm -hmm. we would have like a lunch or, um, or a dinner and I'd be able to really deeply connect with them and get to know them. And that was because these are the decision makers of the company. It would take a little bit more time to organize, but it was well worth it because they were, you know, I'd get, and I would have very specific questions for them. Like, you know, what is the need and just really spend a lot of time listening and developing that personal relationship. So that's just like an example of kind of looking at your strengths and what you enjoy and how can you take something that's maybe like a general process in your company, like, oh, we all do lunch and learns. That's what we do to get new clients. Or we all go to conferences and just network in the, in the food line. (laughs) Um, You know, like another thing I, my old boss used to tell me at uh, conferences is he'd say, you have to come back with 20 business cards. I'm like, that doesn't really make sense because I could just go up and ask people for business cards and not ask them anything. So I would say, well, okay, your end goal is that I come back with new business, right? It's not really about the business cards. And he'd say, yeah, okay. So I I would think of how can I focus on that end goal without just having 20 business cards um, because that was more effective. Um, And then one other thing that I really like to say about selling in general, like I think everyone knows that there's just a very like tactical part of selling and it has to do with numbers, right? It has to do with like working your pipeline, with following up with people, with making enough calls every day, all that stuff, right? There's a numbers part of sales. And then I think there's a confidence part, right? And and like a part of you that's like almost like empowered. And that's really important too. And I always say that they work with each other and they create this kind of like circle of reinforcement, which sounds really simple. 
Um, but I always say it work it based in knowledge, right? Like knowledge of what you're selling. Um, and then that could also be knowledge of your competitors, uh, knowledge of your product and how it works in the marketplace, knowledge of um, kind of like your clients and who they are, right? So there's a like foundational knowledge piece. You have to really know your shit um, and know what you're selling and who you're selling it to. And then there's like a confidence piece, right? That I think comes with the knowledge. And then there's a practice piece. You just have to keep practicing. And then the more you practice, the more you build your confidence, the more you build your knowledge, and it becomes a circle, right? That makes you more and more powerful. So I think if you focus on, I always say, if you focus on that um, and building your knowledge and building your confidence and just continually doing it over and over again, and part of that is doing the work of selling, right? Following up, managing your pipeline, all that stuff. I think that's like a really great approach and you just have to figure out what works for you specifically. Absolutely. And I think in, in soulful selling, you do a lot of like training, coaching, education. Um, you talk about authenticity and consultative selling. This fits right in, but you're not, it, it's not with effort. It's just like, it slips right into authenticity. Right. Um, and it starts with like that research or like the pointed conversation or, putting in a little bit of effort up front to get that what like confidence and knowledge well the knowledge mm -hmm. brings the kind of confidence and you got to practice all that stuff so that sounds really easy so I, all i know is that like my next few days i'm going to try to practice this um mm -hmm. and you know again like and, and and first foremost shift that mindset so i will tell you next friday how this all turns out for me i'll do a one week experiment of just like going yeah. all in and I'll, I'll, I'll also, um, if I can, before we get this thing live, put it in the show notes of like Susan's experiment, see what happens. Because uh, oh, I'm yeah. definitely, I call I myself that. an awkward human being. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, you know, it's not that I'm like 100% introverted. I'm like also mm -hmm. like on the milder side. And when somebody talks to me about motorcycles, I'm like, yeah, my eyes light up because that's something I care about. Someone right. talks about plants. I, I, you know, I fall asleep sometimes or, you know, I have to figure out something <laughs> that could be interesting. But anyways, uh, thank you for, thank you for, um, for the thoughtful information, knowledge, confidence, practice, love that. Um, where can people uh, go to find out more about you and, um, and connect with you? Yeah, well, the best place is actually I created a free PDF that kind of like summarized what we talked about. Um, and you can find it at soulfulselling.com slash mail shake. So it's S O U L F U L selling. Um, so that is the best place to find information. And then you can download some um, information about what we talked about in this specific interview and, um, and a couple little pointers on there. Awesome. Thanks for joining. And we'll leave, we'll leave a, a link to those in the show notes as well. So um, just click away. Thanks, Christine. Awesome. Thank you.